Hey folks, Wish SE up here in New Hampshire. Today we're talking about the M&P 22 pistol. This has the exterior frame and dimensions of the full-size M&P uh, 9mm handguns that are also in 40 and 357 SIG. Very, uh, this, the ergonomics of this gun are very good. The internals of this gun are not made by uh, Smith & Wesson, they're actually made by Walther. So, um, when you take this gun apart, it's not like <laughs> what you'd expect to see uh, for Smith & Wessons. And there's some actual photos that I'll show you um, in just a bit uh, on the gun and the internals of the gun. From an ergonomic standpoint, I really like it. It's very uh, comfortable. Uh, one of the biggest advantages of this gun is that you can learn to run the M&P uh, pistols in a less expensive caliber, the uh, 22 uh, long rifle. I know right now 22s are hard to find, however, uh, once we get caught up with the uh, manufacturing of that in another nine months or so, I think uh, supplies will kind of uh, stabilize. So one of the nice things about this gun is it feels like the M&P full-size handgun. It does have a 12 round magazine. The magazines are super easy to load, which is one nice thing. If you, if you own Rugers or Buck, Buckmarks, uh, um, Browning Buckmarks like I do, you know, the magazine, running that magazine down with your thumb on those guns can be really kills your thumb after a while. These magazines are really easy to load uh, and very nice. There's a positive um, extraction as your bag comes right out, which is something that I want um, as I'm training with, with a gun. Um, as I mentioned, 12 round magazines. The guns come now with just one magazine, so for me, um, I bought some extra magazines and I'd recommend that you do the same. One of the things the uh, M&P 22 pistols have that I'm not a fan of is the magazine disconnect. Now, why that provides a level of safety um, for you, it does have some it, uh, effect on the trigger and from my standpoint if for some reason I was using a handgun for self-defense and the magazine came out or was ejected somehow, you're not going to be able to fire the gun. That to me is a, an issue uh, that you need to be aware of and again some people like that and want that and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. Just something to be aware of. I also don't like it from a practice standpoint because if I'm cycling a slide and I want to dry fire, um, that's problematic does have the external safety, uh, and again, for those of you who run this on the M&Ps, um, that's a good thing to have because you're obviously um, building some muscle memory into the presentation of the gun from holsters. You're coming out, safety's on, you're pressing the safety off, so that's a, that's a good feature for those of you who have that on your gun. One of the things I really like about this as a trainer is with some of the Rimfire 22 pistols, to actuate the slide, you're gripping the slide around the, the rear of the gun. Uh, the, the Buck Mark, um, the uh, Ruger uh, Mark uh, Three, Mark Four pistols, uh, 2245s, so you've got to grab that on either side and pull it back. That can be difficult for some people. There's quite a bit of tension on the spring, and it's hard for some people to get a good grip on that. Because you have the full slide, this is an aluminum slide, because you have the full slide, the full length of the gun, you can simply come across with an overhead grasp like that, and it's very, very easy, which means if you're someone new to uh, firearms and you're not comfortable with that, learning that action, learning how to get the slide back and chamber around, uh, and just from a practice standpoint, that's a huge advantage. And really helpful if you're teaching new shooters, perhaps, who are not comfortable with that or who have some issues with their hands or strengthen their hands, being able to work and, uh, and chamber around in a semi-automatic pistol. So um, that, to me, has um, a real advantage. So what we're going to do is we're going to post this video, and then we're going to follow it up with an actual shooting video. Um, it's possible I may shoot a couple of rounds um, in the backyard here um, just to put it on so you can see it. I like the gun. I've shot it before, but we'll do a full uh, shooting review of this in a couple of weeks. One thing I would, uh, I would say is that um, now um, there are several suppliers out there, places that you can get uh, if, you're, uh, if you have a dealer locally where you can order a gun like this um, online or through your, through your dealer or distributor. Um, and the prices range somewhere between $350 to $450 depending. 
And uh, I'm a big fan of, of giving your local guys business. So if you've got a local FFL uh, dealer, give them the business. That's great. Uh, maybe you don't have someone local. In that case, you might want to order it and have it shipped to a FFL a dealer for that transfer. But um, I think it's a fair price. I think $350 to $400 is a fair price for, for this gun, especially if you're going to be using it as a trainer. So we're going to go ahead and uh, post this, and then in a couple weeks we'll come back with uh, some shooting video. So again, I really appreciate everybody watching. The channel now is, is really taking off and growing, and that's a result of you and all the support that you've given. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up icon in the bottom left corner of the video and um, share it with your friends and family. Invite them to join and subscribe to the channel. We will be posting uh, more videos over the next several weeks, including an XD9C uh, review, a XD45C review, uh, as well as some additional ones on contact holsters. So over the next couple months, we got a lot of stuff in the pipeline working for you guys and uh, looking forward to having you uh, subscribe to the channel and come back and watch what we're producing. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay safe.